Ian McKaig is probably one of my biggest idols and references in the entertainment industry. Not only for the amazing work uh, that he has, I think no one taught me more about how to enjoy a pencil stroke than Ian and looking at Ian's drawings. But uh, in, in this case, and, and this is a curiosity, I don't know if you all um, know this, but Ian is half blind, uh, as I am as well, half blind. And uh, he went through an experience that he almost lost the eyesight in the, his good eye, his only eye. I had the same last year, uh, last March. Uh, I had, uh, I, I, I got, I've gone to surgery uh, and almost lost my eyesight on the good eye. So almost lost my eyesight as a whole. So a lot of his teachings and the way he approaches art uh, as well as storytelling and how he, if he lost his eyesight, he would go on uh, telling stories, writing, uh, and even playing the piano, something that he is, he is learning uh, as I am. I think he influenced me on that as well. Uh, so as a whole, uh, it was a pleasure to learn from him, to copy his work uh, and all of that. So you definitely will be seeing a lot of his work here. I'll probably make a lot of videos discussing specific um, pieces that he made. But today I want to focus not on one drawing, but one character design that he did uh, for the Star Wars prequels uh, back in around to 2001 and, and so on. There are some drawings here from 99. Uh, and he did a lot of drawings. Uh, I could put together, I think, 15 or so. Uh, but there are lots in books with the art of Star Wars Episode 1, 2, and 3, uh, and, and so on. Uh, I love how he thinks of storytelling uh, before even starting to draw and trying to convey uh, personality uh, all the story traits, um, history of that character, specific character in uh, all of his designs and costume designs. A lot of people uh, worked on this as well. Uh, we're going to see one other example uh, of, of someone that worked on, on the costume designs and definitely the costume uh, staff and costume designers uh, in, in a more... Uh, production standpoint they definitely play a, a huge role here uh, but Ian uh, was responsible for a lot of the look that N Natalie Portman's uh, character Padme or Amidala uh, came to be so this is the and I'll, I'll, I'll go back and forth with some screen grabs it's, it's interesting to see how the design uh, came came to be uh, in the final version uh, so if we look at a lot of the details that were suggested uh, here, uh, especially on, on the small, finer details uh, here, uh, and, and, and you see the final image, uh, it, uh, some of that conveyed and some of that needed to be uh, realized in the final production of the, the costume. Uh, some of that was lost in my um, opinion. Uh, I, I think some of the designs look better without the amount of detail that they finally came to be. Uh, and, and I love in this one as well, a lot of suggestions here. Uh, so really interesting to see how he thinks design uh, as a whole. Uh, as I said before, the books, the first book, especially uh, The Art of Star Wars Episode One, is super hard to find. Uh, but is one of the biggest references that a lot of people suggest in terms of uh, overall design, environments, ships, uh, spaceships, um, vegetation, world building as a whole, uh, as well as characters. These are two pages from from that book, and we we can see a lot of the designs for for Padme. Uh, also, uh, her uh, handmaids. Uh, they they play an important role in the first movie. Uh, spoilers alert, but 
she dresses up as one of her handmaids uh, a lot of the time. Uh, so a lot of the big fancy costumes were used actually by other actresses that were playing the, the handmaids. And, and they have a big um, role in the overall story. I love the influence of Japanese uh, designs in, in a lot of these. It's in interesting to see how that translated. Uh, we're going to see later on, but a lot of uh, head dressings uh, as well uh, and head pieces uh, as a whole. Uh, so that really add up to the overall design. I love the shapes on, on this one. Uh, simpler design, but with a lot of interesting shapes as well as this uh, with the hoodie and, and so on. Uh, another uh, some drawings from the book. I couldn't find the specific page uh, where this was uh, featured. But it's, it's interesting to see and what I love about Ian and, and hearing so many of his interviews, I'll have a lot of the links uh, in the description below so you can check that out. But he talks about story beats that never came to be. Uh, one of them is that Padme uh, would at some point try to cue uh, Anakin. Uh, this part right here, she has a knife. Uh, and he even mentions uh, that in the book, uh, there is some kind of concept art for that. There are other stories, great stories, of the design for Darth Maul, as well as the relationship between Qui-Gon Jinn and uh, Obi-Wan, and, and what that would look like if there, there were a little bit of changes there in the story. Uh, so it's really interesting to see him talk about this. Uh, and we can definitely see some of this designs translating as well uh, in this movie shot. This is very uh, way more intricate in details, uh, but a lot of this headpiece uh, translated to, to the final image. Some other designs more focused on, on head dressing uh, and, and hairstyles. I love this one. Uh, I did a copy of this one. I'll share one old, very old, 10 year old sketchbook uh, from back in the day. Uh, and, and I have a, a study of this. So I, I love his figure drawing as a whole. Um, I'll suggest a lot of content and material where you can see him draw and, and learn from that. But definitely we can learn a lot from the amount of details that he puts uh, in all of those places. So copying uh, goes a long way here if you are really paying attention. So definitely pay attention if you are copying. Uh, in the translation of uh, head pieces, um, there is not uh, a direct one here, but we can definitely see some of the influences from, from this one uh, go to the final design. And, and as we can see, like Natalie Portman is dressed up as a handsmaid. Uh, and as, as I said before, it, it happens a lot throughout the movie. More uh, elaborate costume design. I love this. This is a famous drawing. You probably have seen this before, uh, but I love the simpler version, more uh, um, front view uh, for the overall uh, development of this design. And we can see that a lot of that translated into the final uh, design uh, inside of the costume. Uh, I love how we don't see a lot of the details that came to be here, um, but you have to do it in, in the real world. So, and, and, and you have only a, a specific like amount of possibilities when you're doing the real thing. When you're suggesting something, definitely our mind tend to complete, complete a, a lot of that. Uh, so we can lose uh, a bit of that when we need to realize in the real world. I would love to see uh, more of this. I couldn't find an image. I'll probably rewatch the the movie. Yeah, I'll do that to myself. Uh, but to see how this designs, I love the geometry here and how that translated to to the final costume design. A more simpler version. Uh, some people even call out how much this influenced a uh, race character later on. Uh, in, in some of the designs that were done for for Padme uh, were really used to, to inform that. And, and that makes sense because Ian is informing a lot of designers uh, all across in a lot of the work, probably hundreds, if not thousands of drawings he did for the Star Wars uh, prequels definitely um, have 
influenced uh, and used being used as reference for the new movies, uh, episodes seven through nine, as well as a lot of the other uh, products that have been done for Star Wars since then, Mandalorian and so on. Uh, I love this design. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of uh, Alexander McQueen's uh, Savage Beauty. I'll add a link to a book uh, in the description below as well. Uh, very interesting uh, designs, fashion design. So his understanding of fashion as well and trying to translate that. Uh, this one is also amazing as well as this one. Yeah, I can't, I, I can't say uh, enough and praise enough uh, his work. I really love that. And, and this is the one that I loved how they translated uh, this uh, final design. Uh, I think that the balance between simple and complex uh, it, it's very good and even the the complex here with the simplicity of almost like a geisha kind of a face and, and makeup and also this detail here uh, looks a little bit like a Fabergé egg uh, with all its intricate details and, and so on so the, the, the density and the, the balance of details versus breathing areas uh, it's great in this design as well as the the amount of like big uh, medium uh, and, and small shapes uh, it, it's really well balanced here uh, I love how can we see uh, both here in, in in this front view as well as more of a side view how the overall design came to be uh, in the final and once again uh, Natalie Portman as um, a handmaid at, at least I think that's her <laughs> another uh, design that I couldn't find uh, in the overall um, drawings that I saw but I also love uh, the handmaid's uh, designs here very interesting uh, and we've seen that uh, with the hoodie uh, back in the, in the beginning of the video uh, I couldn't do a video on Padme without mentioning uh, Dermot Power uh, he's one of the the other designers. Uh, I love specifically this one uh, and the expression uh, that uh, it conveys. Some of the designs here uh, relate a little bit with what we've seen uh, with Ian. It reminds me a bit of Diablo uh, designs as well, uh, sorcerers and wizard designs and and so on. Um, so definitely influencing and and having a lot of the references uh, from like pop culture uh, in terms of design and in a lot of fashion as well but i i love the the use of the lower values here darker values in contrast with simplicity uh, throughout the costume design as well as the back view with this uh, small detail here super super interesting so that's basically uh the designs i would love to suggest if you haven't bought it uh Ian's book Shadow Line. I have only the older version. I don't have the new one with uh, added material, uh, extended version. Uh, I'll probably buy that uh, at some point, but I'll do a review here on the channel and probably uh, when you're seeing this, it will be out uh, of the old uh, book. Just going through that a little bit, but it's if you want to do character design, figure drawing, uh, storytelling, storyboards anything like that this is definitely a book to have a uh, book to study copy uh, and analyze uh, and all of that i'll probably do a video specifically on darth maul as there are a lot of amazing stories uh, from that as well and there will be a link in the description for the book if you want to check that out uh, also i'd love to suggest if you want to study more from from ian uh, his courses on Nomon School. He has now six DVDs. Uh, during the research for this video, I, I found that he has these two new ones that I haven't watched yet. Uh, so it was a great pleasure to know that there are there is more content out there from Ian that I haven't seen. So uh, great. There is also a sketchbook uh, tour with him for uh, THU, Trojan Horse Was a Unicorn. I'll add the link in the description. Uh, there are lots of interviews and so on. 
Uh, and last but not least, he has a, an amazing drawing workout for schoolism. Uh, so if you are subscribed to schoolism or um, if you're not, you should definitely check that out. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I really love his work um, and, and he's a big influence on me as a whole. So I hope this is helpful for you as well and uh, gets you motivated and pumped up. Uh, especially if you hear uh, Ian speak, you definitely get uh, pumped up. He's a very positive, very uplifting person. It's a pleasure to, to hear him. And I also had the pleasure of meeting him back in 2017. So it, it, it was great, uh, great experience. So I hope you enjoyed the video. hope you learned a lot and you will learn more from the content uh, in the description below. And I'll definitely hope to see you on other videos down the line. Have a great day.